morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Hugh of Grenoble. Please take a moment to make sure your cell phones are silenced. <coughs> Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Our opening hymn is number 600. Christ the Lord is risen today. That's number 600. <laughs> Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. With your Dear sisters and brothers, the, the Easter season is a most joyful season for us because we call to mind the truth that Jesus is risen, that he has defeated, conquered in his human nature united indeed to his divinity, sin and death through his sacrifice on the cross. And because he is risen now, he is present with us as he strengthens us by word and sacrament so that we may share in his victory over sin, sinful desires, sinful behaviors, and all of the evils of this world and begin even now to live a heavenly life, the life of grace. That we may now enter worthily into these holy mysteries, let us acknowledge our sin. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
almighty, ever-living God constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protection, your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. The readings for today's Mass are on page 126 of the Missalet, 1, 2, 6. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church and, with prayer and fasting, commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Italia. From there, they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they have now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. your dominion. 
reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you, so also you should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. If you are following uh, current events, uh, it's remarkable how the, uh, the Western nations have united very quickly and come to the defense of Ukraine, uh, which is currently being attacked and, and terribly terribly injured by uh, Russian invaders. 
It's an encouraging sign to see the Western nations coming to the, the aid of Ukraine. Let's bring it down to a, a very personal level. Imagine that uh, you were uh, out in your front, front yard and you saw your neighbor next door uh, being accosted uh, by someone, um, physically assaulted. Uh, would, would we not immediately come to their assistance? Call the police, maybe even intervene ourselves. But we wouldn't just simply watch, stand by, and let it happen. And so we see it happening on an international level, and this is very encouraging. The rallying cry of uh, the Ukrainian people in this hour is, in their language, Slava Ukraine, glory to Ukraine. That rallying cry uh, came to my mind as uh, I was listening to Jesus' words in the gospel because he speaks of glory and he speaks of glorifying and being glorified. And that word glory we use very commonly in our worship, do we not? That beautiful hymn of praise to the Blessed Trinity that we say at the beginning of the Mass, the Gloria, glory to God in the highest. And uh, when the gospel is announced, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to one of the evangelists, the response of the faithful is, glory to you. Glory to you. The word glory, our word in the Bible, comes from the Hebrew, kavod. And kavod means uh, weight, uh, substance, something that has uh, great weight or great substance, has great glory, kavod. And when we come into contact with the living God through a faith that God arouses in us to, to as it were, acknowledge his presence, then like the angels who see him face to face, what we feel within us is, is God's glory his awesomeness, his majesty. And our response given to us in Scripture is what the angels say, glory, glory to God in the highest. And the human response to God's glory is often enough, and the Scriptures speak of it, we fall down on our knees, overcome by the sheer power and majesty of God, and we become very aware of our own littleness in comparison to God's greatness. And in fact, actually, there is no comparison. For God's greatness is above all of creation. It's a different order of greatness. And the human response to God's glory is, is praise, awestruck praise, or as the scriptures say, fear of the Lord, a great respect for the majesty and goodness and power that is God. 
And the reason that as children we are often taught to kneel when we pray, for instance, uh, at the, uh, when we say our nighttime prayers, did our parents not teach us to kneel at the bedside? And of course in the liturgy during the Eucharistic prayer, when our mighty God becomes present in the Eucharist, our posture is kneeling. We kneel. Now, we're taught as children to kneel so that that bodily posture can help our soul and our heart to perceive God and to recognize that we owe God everything. That as the scriptures say, every good thing comes from above, from the Father of lights. And as Christians particularly, we are aware not only of God's great might, his omnipotence, if you will, but of his great care for each one of us. That God, who is beyond our ability even to imagine in his glory, cares about even the smallest details of my life and is desirous that I open my heart and my ears in obedience to receive his word and his spirit that God's glory may dwell in me. And through that being glorified by the gift of the spirit that we receive in our baptism through faith, that we glorify God through that grace that we've received, his glorifying us. We give him glory in our praise, in our worship, in the conduct of our lives, in the way we conform our thoughts, our actions, our whole being according to the nature of God who is love, caritas, agape, charity, all words for the same reality. God is love. God is eternal life. And the Lord Jesus says, I give you a new commandment. He spoke these words at the Last Supper as he was preparing his disciples for the sacrifice that he would make of his life the next day for our salvation, salvation of the whole human race. He spoke these words after Judas had left them to go and to betray the Lord. I give you a new commandment. Love one another, not the way you have been accustomed perhaps to love each other in the past, which is always kind of mixed in with a certain selfishness. And self-interest. I call you to a different order of love. The love with which God loves, the Father loves me, and with which I love you as God's eternal Son. And this is how now I want you to live. That is, I have loved you, now you are to love one another. And thus give glory to God. Now is the Son of Man glorified, uh, Jesus said. He was referring to himself in his human nature, calling himself Son of Man. Now is the Son of Man glorified, glorified by his Father, how does the Father glorify the Son of Man? By inviting him to willingly undertake the greatest act of love that any human being has done for another. It is such a great and awesome act of love that in the liturgy we are required by church law to depict it. It is Jesus on the cross. Which of course is also 
at the same time the representation of the greatest sin that human beings have ever committed to attempt to put to death their God who has given them life and every good thing. Now is the Son of Man glorified by willingly laying down his life on the cross as a pleasing sacrifice to the Father, that by that love, that trust in the Father, he might merit for us the gift of the Holy Spirit that the Father and the Son have shared from all eternity and poured out upon those who believe in him and are baptized in the water that flowed from his side as he hung upon the cross so that the love of God may be established in our hearts and that by cooperation with all the graces that God gives us subsequent to our baptism, the grace of hearing the word of God preached and the sacraments celebrated and the life of charity of the church given to us and allowing us to participate in it, that we might be glorified ourselves and grow in holiness of life and love each other with the heart of Jesus love even our enemies and our persecutors with the love of Jesus who opened not his mouth before his accusers, but like a lamb, a gentle lamb was led to the slaughter. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I've loved you. Let's look at the first reading. Paul and Barnabas, sent by the church in Antioch in Syria to preach Jesus, to proclaim the good news that God loves us so much that he sent his only son to suffer and die for us so that all that who believe in him may share the eternal life of God. And we're told by St. Luke, who wrote the Acts of the Apostles, that they made a considerable number of disciples. Of course, we also know they made a considerable number of enemies who attacked them, beat them, stoned them at times, tried to kill them as they went from Lystra and Iconium and Antioch in Pisidia to preach God's word. And they did it until they were driven out. They couldn't remain there anymore. But then what did they do? They then returned. They came back to the churches they had established, to the disciples that they had left behind to strengthen the spirits of those disciples and exhort them to persevere in the faith which has freed them because faith gives access to the love of God. And telling the Christian community there, it is necessary for us as Christians to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Many hardships until God finally rules over our hearts. And what is the nature of these hardships? Well, we're all familiar with them. Of course, some of the hardships uh, that come into our life are the result of our, our sins. And of course, we know that sin isn't just a violation of a, of a commandment. It is an assault upon the good of the human person. So we bring much suffering into our life when we do not listen to Jesus, trust in him, and obey his commandments. The enemies of the church, they delight to bring these statistics and say, well, you know, 70% of Catholics don't believe this teaching of the church. 65% of the Catholics don't follow that teaching. They delight in it. Why? because they fear the church. Because the church exposes their own sins. 
calling them to repentance, but it exposes their own sins, and they don't want to they don't want to repent. They don't want to humble themselves before God. And, of course, it is very discouraging for us in the church to see our fellow believers say, well, I don't believe what the church teaches in this regard or in that regard and so forth. That causes great suffering to any believer, to see a fellow believer displaying a hardness of heart. I will not follow. I will not obey. I will not give glory to God by following his commandments. But they return to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, and they say it's necessary to undergo many hardships. So what are the hardships that we experience even if we are one with the Lord in following his commandments? Well, we have to bear with the evil that others do. We have to bear with it the way Jesus bore with evil. He didn't cooperate with evil. He separated light from darkness and truth from falsehood. He didn't, he didn't leave people in doubt about these things. But he said, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world, to crush the world. I came to save it. And by my love, self-sacrificing love and patience towards sinners, then I work for their repentance. And that's what the church does. We work for the repentance of our enemies, even as we must bear much suffering at their hands. There's some people, they preach, some quote-unquote Christian preachers who preach the prosperity gospel. If you, if you follow all the commandments of God, then you, you're going to have every worldly blessing. You're going to be wealthy. You're going to have lots of friends. You're going to be able to go on great vacations. You're never going to have to worry about economic downturns. Uh, you won't have to worry about getting real sick. They haven't quite figured out death yet, though, right? You know, even if you follow the prosperity gospel, you're still going to die, all right? So but this is not the gospel. This is a, a caricature of the gospel. Indeed, God blesses us, but he parcels out his earthly blessings to us in the way that he knows is best for us to develop the spiritual blessings, the spiritual blessings. And uh, so we must bear with one another, show patience, kindness, strength, oh yes, witness for justice, but we know that the way God understands justice, it's only achieved through mercy, through mercy. And now let's go real quick to the second reading. John the Apostle, the beloved Apostle of Jesus, who laid his head on Jesus' breast at the Last Supper. He's in prison now on the island of Patmos, a prison island off the coast of present-day Turkey. Why is he in prison? Well, it's not because he's a murderer. It's not because he's stolen anything. It's not because he's assaulted anybody. It's because he's given witness to Jesus. That's his crime. He gave witness to Jesus. And they arrested him and threw him in prison. That's part of the suffering, right, that John had to in his life accept as the path to eternal life, the fullness of eternal life in him. So we don't hear him in the book of Revelation, this vision that he received while he was in prison, saying to God, God, why have you done this to me? But he says, Lord, your will be done. I was faithful to you, so whatever the consequences are, Lord, you'll give me the grace to deal with it. So he has a vision of the new heaven and the new earth that the Holy Spirit even now is bringing about in the hearts of those who believe by the grace of baptism. 
and the former heaven and the former earth, the fallen world, is passing away. And for us who are following Jesus more and more, that world is more and more passing away from us because we do not, we're not any longer attracted by its lusts, by its false promises. We're not looking to dominate our neighbor. We're not looking for fame. We're not looking for power over other people. That's what the world chases. That's what Vladimir Putin's looking for, destroying the nation of Ukraine because he wants power for himself and he says for Russia, but he's not helping Russia at all. No. These things don't matter to us anymore. I don't need to look at pornography. Look at other people in lustful ways. It doesn't have attraction for me because I now have a great respect for people and I honor them in their bodies as I would hope they'd honor me in mine. That's why I cannot accept the, the rhetoric of the, of the pro-abortion movement because I don't care how much you use all of your euphemisms at the end you have to say but there's a child there and how are we going to protect the life of that child? These things pass away. They don't have attraction for us. I say they don't have attraction for us. We know they still do, right? We're tempted. But what do we do with temptation? Jesus shows us what we do. We go to the Father. We go to God's Word. We call on the power of grace and the Holy Spirit so that we can overcome temptation, as Jesus always did. And so this is a remarkable phrase that I want to call your attention to. So John is given this vision, not only for his sake, but for our sake, since he has recorded it and it is part of the scriptures to this day. I saw the holy city of the new Jerusalem. I saw heaven with all the angels and saints around the throne of God and of the Lamb. But he says it this way, it's not like I was drawn up there, but it came down to me. I saw the holy church, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. He has a vision of the church, not only in heaven, but the church that is on earth, united to the heavenly church by grace and by the sacraments. When I come to Mass, I receive the bread of angels. I receive the bread come down from heaven, Jesus Christ. And certainly no symbol of Jesus Christ, If the Eucharist is just a symbol of Jesus, which is what the polls say 70% of Catholics believe, then I'm in the wrong business. I am wasting my time, and you are wasting your time. Go and do something else. But if it is Jesus, as the church tells me it is, as Jesus told his disciples at the Last Supper, this is my body given up for you, this is my blood poured out for you, then it is right and meet that we are here and give glory to God who has glorified us through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And then Jesus says to John, and says to us, Behold, I make all things new. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And together, profess our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has made his dwelling with us. He has glorified us by the gift of the Holy Spirit and promises to make all things new. Counting on our Heavenly Father's boundless mercy, we now present to him our needs and those of the whole world. Our response is grant our prayer, O Lord, that all members of the church may be strengthened in holiness and walk daily in the fear of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. That divisions among nations may be healed, violence cease, and the peace and justice of God's kingdom may reign in every human heart. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the grace to love others as Jesus loves us. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, Lord. For the poor and all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, Lord. For faithful marriages and an abundance of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For an end to war and the suffering it causes, and for the protection of our servicemen and women and first responders, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the sick among our family and friends, especially Florence Bean, that the Lord may bless them and protect them from all evil. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all our beloved dead, especially our Paul Grimm, that Christ, the Good Shepherd, may lead them safely home to be at peace with God our Father. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. And for those special prayers which we bring before the Lord this day. Loving Father, your Son taught us to ask for what we need. Fill us with confidence as we present to you our needs through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preparation hymn is number 614. Alleluia, alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. Number 614.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. This Mass is being offered for the intentions of the entire parish. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this Easter season, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son and in the saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. Give me that water. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Wilton our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with St. Hugh of Grenoble and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through all him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. We saw it set at a mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, we saw it set at a mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, we saw it set at a mundi. Don't know this.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. We thank the Lord that he has given us this beautiful day as his own, that we may worship and praise him, give him glory, that he may glorify us in his Son. Our annual rummage sale is next weekend, May 21st and 22nd, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. There will be something for everyone, as always, and we look forward to seeing you there. That takes place downstairs in Grenoble Hall. Although we are still a month away, a reminder that Cardinal Gregory will be with us on Sunday, June 19th, at the 11 a.m. Mass to celebrate our 75th anniversary. Please mark your calendar. And now I invite you to pick up the prayer card that you will find in the pew racks and pray with me the prayer to St. Hugh of Grenoble to ask its intercession in the 75th year of the founding of our parish. And let's pray together. O oh God, who wonderfully numbered among your holy shepherds the Bishop St. Hugh of Grenoble, a man burning with divine charity and outstanding for that faith which overcomes the world, grant through his intercession that we too, persevering in faith and charity, may merit to be sharers of his glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, letare, alleluia. We are meruisti portare, alleluia. The Day of Resurrection, number six, one, three. 